find or Okay. Oh, okay. More people. Nice. Um, nice. All right. So today, Tymon and I are going to be covering. Um, nope. Not this. Uh, not alpha. Well, yes. This it, it's design. So we're doing design. Right, so Tymon and I are going to be covering UI UX today for the front end primer. So you guys are going to have two front end primers um, because we think it's important that, you know, people on the back end can also know the basics of front end. Um, but yeah, so basically today's, wait, hold on one sec. Yeah, so basically today we're going to be teaching design and then in your next front end primer, I'm fairly sure they're going to be covering React. Um, so yeah, cool. Okay, so I guess we can start, of course, uh, before we begin, we can go over our agenda. So we're going to be starting with an intro to UI UX design. Um, we're going to be talking about the role of the designer and also some potential career opportunities and then the tools of the trade. So, okay, sorry. Um, yeah, so, okay, sorry, sorry. Uh, all right. So we're gonna be teaching you guys Figma because that's like a really popular tool right now for design. And a lot of, I, I know a lot of software roles, like it, especially in web development, at least I've seen that they, um, like people or applicants that have like the experience with all the different portions of web development. Um, yeah, so I, I, we just think it's a cool um, tool, tool to use um, and it should be pretty helpful. And then we'll just introduce you guys to the homework. Homework shouldn't take too long. It's not super complex. So um, yeah, it should be okay. Um, yeah. All right. Of course, before we begin, um, as always, feel free to ask us any questions in between and drop them in the chat. So we'll always be monitoring the chat. So um, yeah, feel free to ask us anything. Um, yeah. All right. So let's start. Time in. Go for it. All right. Hey, guys. What's up? So um, I'm going to start off by talking a little bit about design and the general mindset that people have when they design things. So next slide. So um, to start off, we're going to cover kind of the definition of design broadly. So it is primarily uh, the way of creating something for the user. And everything that you design, everything that you design is for a user, for a certain purpose uh, that someone else is going to use. So it's always very important to um, set a goal for the user. And um, that's where a little bit more of the businessy stuff comes in, where you think about your, your market and who you are making something for. Um, so design happens in, in anything. It can be design or it can be lamps, keyboards, um, blankets, window blinds, shelves, uh, literally anything you can think of. Someone else has thought about who is going to use this product, product and how can I make it more usable for that person. So in web dev, of course, we're going to talk mostly about digital interface design, which is how people interact with websites and web apps. And But design is a very broad topic. So it extends way beyond web design. Um, so the, the best way to learn design is by being observant and paying attention to the things that other people think about when they design things. So what about that shelf makes it more usable? What about this website, the layout of the buttons makes it easy to use? Uh, so when you were trying to develop your own designer mindset, is it's very important to, um, to think about the way that uh, people do that and then when you try to employ the same mindset kind of thinking back to the examples you've seen and then applying that knowledge to uh, whatever you are designing yourself. Next slide. So we're going to start off with a simple exercise. 
so there's this guy, his name is Don Norman, and people call him the father of design because uh, 30 or 40 years ago, he looked at the world and he said, people, uh, people who make things are not paying enough attention to the needs of the user. So uh, people who made TV remotes were not paying attention to the user. People who made dashboards for nuclear plants were not paying attention to the user. So Don Norman kind of started this whole movement and this new area of expertise where people started specializing in thinking about the user. So a very simple example he uses is Norman Doors, where uh, he talks about doors that are designed in a very confusing way that make them hard to use. So the example he gives in his book, The Design of Everyday Things, he, he mentions how he had a colleague who got stuck in between two parallel sets of doors in this like, um, like business building, right? And so these doors were made to be very beautiful and very minimalistic. So it was essentially just the frame. There were no handles, the hinges were not exposed. And so what ended up happening is that his colleague got trapped because it was not clear on which side of the door the hinge was. So the, while going between both of the doors, his colleague got turned around and started pushing on the side of the door that had the hinge. And of course, when you do that, the door doesn't open. So in that scenario, the designer of the door could have done a much better job at making the doors usable as opposed to um, stylish by uh, actually showing where the hinge is. Uh, and so, a simple design choice like that can have a huge impact on the way that people use whatever you're making. Next slide. So a good example of a intuitively usable door is this one. And I'm sure you've seen it, or you may or may not have seen it on Cal campus. And these doors are used a lot because they're really good as fire escape doors. Because if you need to leave, you can just push on the door, it's super obvious. There, there's a thing poking out. So when you push on it, the door automatically unlocks and you can leave the building. So um, often something you wanna think about is when you're designing something, you want it to be the path of least resistance for the user. The easiest thing for the user should be the thing that you want them to do. Um, and you can employ this framework on basically anything, right? It's like uh, on a website, if you want your user to do something, before they, they go do anything else on the website, you can make it a pop-up or you could put it at the top of your page. And that's a pretty simple example, but as you get deeper into the actual thinking of it, um, there, there comes a lot of nuance and a lot of smart things that you can do to make whatever you're making more usable. Um, yeah, so uh, hold on, before we move on, um, I kind of wanna, um, ask you guys, like, what are some things that you would consider in making a door for general use in a building? I guess it's like, it's not that creepy, because like, if it's really loud, it's really annoying. Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly, right. Comfort of the user, making sure that people um, are, are comfortable using the door. All right, we can move on. Okay, cool. Thank you for talking about doors, Timon. Um, we always appreciate it. Okay, um, so I guess we're gonna start moving on to more of like the technical definitions of some design terms. So like we mentioned before, we're doing a, doing a lesson on UI, UI and UX. Um, those two terms basically stand for user interface and user experience. And Basically, you know, one might be wondering what's the difference, right? What's the difference between these two? And there's actually a pretty, you know, stark contrast between them, but they are very related and they go hand in hand. So let's just get into it. Um, yeah, so as I said, UI stands for user interface design. UI is very related to UX and they work together a lot. It more so concerns the visual elements on the page rather than like the philosophy 
behind the design of the page. So the interface is essentially what the user is interacting with and what they're seeing. So for example, here on the left side, left, left, left hand corner, we have Facebook's user interface. And yeah, basically it's just everything dumped on the screen, right? That's their interface. Obviously there's some thought behind it and that's what user, user interface designers do is design interfaces. Um, so basically user interface design concerns like font typing, what kind of fonts you use, how bold they are, how like the size of the fonts, um, color schemes, iconography. So for example, like when, when I wanna go home, like what does the button for that look like? Um, spacing between elements, what kinds of images they're putting up. Like for example, here we have this little banner. Um, that's pretty cute. Um, and then animations on the page. So, you know, like if you, if you hover on a button and it's gonna change colors or, um, like if you scroll down and stuff like pops up on the page, that kind of stuff. Um, and then just general layout. So basically to make this concise user interface designers work with the visuals and the stuff that is actually on the page. And then UX is a completely different thing. So basically user experience design is the art of designing interactions between users and products. So essentially it's not at all about visuals, but it's more so about the feel and how the users will kind of step through a platform. So for example, here on the right, we notice that we have this little flow chart and user experience is essentially like this user starting up here, following this arrow down to like their end goal, right? So as you see here, there's multiple steps that a user can take um, to get somewhere. And in the middle, you know, it might, you might run into errors. So that's kind of what these branches represent. So like here, oh no, like we can't do something. Um, but yeah, essentially user experience designers will create these types of, I guess, maps of what users will experience while they're using our platform. Um, user experience design doesn't only concern web applications. It concerns any type of product. It's anything that a user can experience, you know, intuitively that counts as user experience design. And then UX is very, very user centric. So, um, Basically, when you're designing these flows and trying to craft like a specific feel for your web page, it's not really done blindly. You have to really think about the target audience that you're trying to reach and who's really going to be using this website the most. Because then with that information, you can better craft the experience that they have. Because of course, like a 90 year old trying to grocery shop online is different than like a site for like a five year old kid, you know, who's like looking at toys or something. Um, so it's definitely important to think about how how your design choices will influence the people that are using it. Um, yeah, and then it often involves a lot of communication with the developers to make sure that everything is routed correctly and everything looks right. Um, yeah, and UI UX are very related in the sense that user experience is also defined by what's on the page. Um, so in that sense, they kind of go hand in hand, um, but yeah. Awesome. So we're going to kind of jump into a little bit of a case study. Uh, I just like calling it case study. I don't know if it is, but basically this is a project called Huddle. I worked on it during the summer and I thought it really well illustrated the different types of design that you have when you're working on a platform or a startup or any sort of project. So essentially I broke it up into four tiers. So first we have brand design and then user interface design, user experience design. And then at the very end, we have product design, which is a little bit different, but um, we'll still talk about it briefly. Okay, so to start off, we have brand design. So brand design is essentially the uh, crafting like what your entire brand or like your company kind of image looks like as a whole. So it involves, you know, the color scheme of your logo, the color scheme of your website and everything that may stand for your company. Um, also just like creating your logo and creating like common web elements that are gonna appear within your brand a lot. So this is kind of an example of three different um, brand designs that we are kind of choosing between. And then down here is like a bullet points pulled straight from our Figma um, when I was designing our brand. So essentially, you know, we just kind of laid out like the different elements that we want to see repeated a lot and how this kind of ties into our brand. Um, because essentially with our, with our product, we wanted to kind of mimic what Zoom breakout rooms do, except it's 
like huddles of people visually laid out on the platform and then people can really freely um, jump between the different huddles. So we really wanted to avoid like flatness in our design to emphasize like the dimensionality and the dynamics of how people can like move around really freely. So yeah, I think like brand design of course is not directly tied into you know, the actual inner workings of your platform, but it does really have to work well with the product that you're trying to design and the value that you're trying to bring to the customer. So yeah. Next, we have a user interface design, like I mentioned earlier. And this is basically what our platform itself look like. And here you can kind of see the different, like small tidbits of design that we put in to kind of align with what we wanted our UI to look like. So for example, we have, um, up here it says, you know, we used, we used a nice modern font, actually very similar to the one in here. Um, and then with our icons, we wanted to make them as simple as possible because in video chats, you have a lot of stuff moving around. So you don't really want to have to decide for a lot of other things. And then we also wanted to make use of light, uh, not like super aggressive gradients uh, because that, you know, it aligns with our brand image as well and our brand design. And we also wanted to make the colors customizable to whoever's using it. Um, ultimately with our brand design, even we didn't really decide on a color scheme. It was more so just like the concept of a gradient, um, kind of interesting, but yeah. And then lastly down here, we have, you know, an example of animation. So these controls shouldn't always stay here because they clutter up the screen and instead they should only come out and animate slide out when you actually want them to. So these are just five like small examples of user interface design uh, thought processes, I guess, um, when we we're making this platform. Of course, there's a lot of other things that we put in like very intentionally, but these are just five of like the more basic ones to better like illustrate what this all means. Okay, and then next we have user experience design. Um, this might look familiar. It's basically our version of the little roadmap that we had built out for um, our user flow. So essentially like up here is where people log in and create rooms. And then all the way down here is like when they are interacting with our platform and all of its features and then ultimately like ending a call. Um, yeah, so this map pretty much outlines the user flow throughout the entire platform. So exactly what the user would see and all the different ways that they can accomplish one thing. For example, here you see that it branches out. Um, this is like two different ways to move between a huddle. Um, yeah, so it's all just depicted here and it's very clear what happens. So essentially with our user experience, we had to ask ourselves like a lot of difficult questions and a lot of questions that oftentimes like there are no answers for. I think that's a big thing in design is that a lot of times like you'll find yourself trying to debate between two options or like you and a teammate don't disagree, like don't agree on a design uh, option. And a lot of times it's really important to know that with this type of design, it's not necessarily something that we can predict. Um, the way that users interact with your stuff isn't always like an exact science. And a lot of this comes down to user testing. So um, here, like these middle three bullet points are some examples of some like design related questions that we had to think about to basically make the user flow as smooth and as intuitive as possible. So for example, what should the application do when you close a tab versus clicking like the end call button, right? And how can our development team be able to handle both cases? Because oftentimes like it's kind of hard to handle the case where someone closes a tab. So the design and the development there kind of go hand in hand. And then another very, very minor thing actually is like oftentimes in design, you have success messages. So for example, we had like this little button here that allowed you to like copy a link and send it to someone and then the other person can join your room. And basically we thought like, how can we show our users that this happened? Because if you clicked on this and nothing happened, you'd be like really confused as to what, like what just went on, right? Like did, did I even copy anything, right? So adding a small success message is a really, really easy, simple way to just give your custom or give your users that like higher level of like confidence um, in like their actions. And then, yeah, like I kind of mentioned this earlier, but how many different ways can a user move huddles? So originally we wanted to allow users to like drag um, using their cursor, drag stuff around. So like you can drag your avatar, not avatar, your video screen basically to another huddle. But then we thought like, this would work on desktop, but then looking at something like a touch screen, right? That wouldn't really make sense because usually 
when you drag your finger on a touch screen, you're scrolling or you're like panning through something else. So we really have to think about all the different use cases and how for all the different possible ones, we could accommodate people's actions in a way that's still like intuitive and doesn't mix together in a weird way. Um, yeah, so all of these are very great UX, uh, user experience questions. And like I said, they're often refined through user research and interviews. And a lot of times you don't know the correct answer to something until you go out in the field and you know demo it to users and ask them questions and figure out where the successes and failures of design lie. But yeah, um, that's UX design. And then lastly, we have something that's less related is product design. So product design is very, very um, broad. So it's essentially just the, the practice of deciding what, first of all, identifying who you're building for. Um, like I mentioned earlier and will often mention is that, you know, your user is the most important. Um, and then you ask yourself, what, what are the pains of the users? Like what, what problem are you trying to fix? And then after that, you ask what product features can we design in our product to solve these pains and create some gains? Um, so yeah, it's basically the process of problem to solution. Um, and it also involves a lot of customer interviewing, a lot of customer research, driving product roadmaps to lay out like, for example, what features do we need for our MVP, like our minimum viable product. And then from there on out for our specific users and our specific target market, what other features do we need to add um, that makes sense for them, right? And then, yeah, so it's essentially the design of a product as a whole. It doesn't necessarily concern user flow, user experience, nor does it concern visual elements, but it also, again, like it relates to those things very much. So yeah. Um, yeah, and that's the end of this. Um, basically just wanted to give you guys a look at how like in a real world project, all of these different types of design work together to create a platform and to create a brand. So yeah, nice. Now I'll hand it off to Timon again. Thanks, Vicky. Okay, so right now we're gonna talk a little bit about the role of your of the designer and uh, you guys as backend engineers, um, maybe not as directly involved with the designer, but it is still very important to know what they're thinking as they create their product. Um, and also maybe you guys will um, have some more interest in design after this presentation. So you, you might want to explore it as well. So next slide. Uh, okay, so the designer's entire job is to create the most desirable interaction for the user. So as we were mentioning earlier, um, you want to make all of your buttons, everything on the page, very convenient. For example, uh, the share button Vicky uh, showed on Huddle um, that all has to be very intuitive. And she intentionally used that, that like little sharing icon to make it very clear to the user that if they want to share the link, they just hit the share button. So in web development, that often comes in the form of creating graphics and site elements, which um, ties in with graphic design. So Another big part of this design cycle is making changes and starting over again sometimes. So the designer is often working with a lot of different factors and they're always trying to integrate those into one good product. Now, it is difficult to do this correctly on the first try very often. So uh, a lot of the time you'll the, the designer will come up with one thing, they'll show the client, they'll think about it, they'll test it, and then they have to readjust and make changes. So um, for example, I, I've had a few projects where I've started, um, I've talked to the client or who, whoever I was designing for, asked for feedback, and then they, they either said, um, I like this and this, can you change this and that? or they they say this is not quite it can we like pivot to something else so um this idea often ties into the design of the user flow so for example on a website um like very simply like apple.com right they 
their designers came together and they said, what do we want people to do when they come to our website? So if you go to apple.com just for fun, um, right now on, the, on their front page, they, they have an ad for the iPhone 12 Pro, right? Because they really want people to see that they, they've innovated this new product. And then uh, another big thing that Apple wants to convey to its users is simplicity and cleanliness which is why their website is, is very sleek. Ansa, do you have a question? I was just wondering like why your mouse is moving with your hands not moving. Oh, Vicky is sharing screen. I mean, oh, uh, I'm, a, I'm this I magic was actually. So confused. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, that's my secret talent. I'm telepathic. Um, but yeah, so the they're, so uh, the Apple people got together, and the they essentially the, like everything that they they put on their website is very intentional and very, um, very targeted to make sure that people go where they want them to go. Um, which is why this whole design thing is like, um, such a big big thing nowadays is because controlling. And, and yeah, like to put it bluntly, controller, controlling your user base is going to increase your ability to make money off of them. So that's why th this whole like focus on the user is so big nowadays. Okay, cool. So I, I mentioned it a little bit before, but user testing and interviewing is really important. Uh, if you are trying to make a serious product that um, is competitive in the market, uh, and that can be like any website or web app, you always have to test an interview. Um, I know that Vicky's team got together and did a lot of testing for Huddle to make sure that their users um, understood how to use it and that it was intuitive because no one wants to use something that's worse than Zoom essentially, right? So you have to make sure that whatever you're putting out there is, uh, a powerful motivator for people to switch. And then, yeah, it, all, it also comes down to uh, collaborating with the client and also making sure that uh, your devs are on the same page. So sometimes the designer will want to suggest like something really um, technically complex, right? And at that point, the designer would need some uh, coding knowledge to know if implementing this feature that they want to really want to implement to make the user like super excited about their website if it's actually feasible to put into the project with the timeline that people have. Um, so this is Fox. Um, wait, yeah. sorry, I'm on Rita. Yeah, yeah, Vicky, okay. you can go ahead. But yeah, this is Factimus Prime. Okay. Um, yeah, so now we'll just talk about some potential career options. This is Maybe not so relevant to this branch, but hey, who knows? Who knows? You might uh, end up enjoying this more than the typing. Um, but yeah, so these are probably the five more common um, career paths. It's not entirely, it doesn't really cover like the entire set of pot potential careers, but here are some. So basically graphic designers, um, this is probably a very common one that you guys have heard of. They help create visual elements of a website, visual elements of a company in general, uh, creating logos, all that stuff. Um, and then UI designers do something kind of similar, but more so work with placing those visual elements in like the correct way and determining like the overall brand style guidelines of a company or a platform. And then user experience designers, these kind of follow the definition of what I told you before, but they design the user flow and the feel of the website. Um, and kind of the intuition and just overall how effective like the design of these experiences. And then product designers design and plan products as a whole. And then unicorns, it's kind of a, I don't know how common this term is actually, but I just know I've seen it and I thought it was kind of cute. Um, basically these people know how to design as well as program. And now that you've watched this lesson, this could be you slash this already is you. Um, yeah, I guess these are like rare and cool. So um, yeah, anyway, um, yeah. So these are just five of the career options that 
exist out in the market right now. Um, of course, there are more, but yeah. All right, so time in, go for it. All right, so uh, of course, you may be wondering how do you make these design framework things into concrete things, right? And it's that there's a a layer in between product idea, user flow, all that like diagram stuff Vicky was showing you guys, and having a finished front end and back end website. So recently there's been a lot of technology that allows people to really quickly mock up a website and that can then be translated into code. Um, yeah, so next slide. So here we see some of the logos of prototyping tools that designers use to make websites um, very quickly. So the first four uh, you'll see there uh, from left to right, that is Sketch, Figma, Adobe XD, and Framer. So all of these are kind of similar uh, in that if you're familiar with Figma, they're all um, basically the same thing, except for some, some differences in features. It's, it is called Adobe EXD. <laughs> so um, these tools allow you to sort of set up this like, uh, to put it simply, you, you can set up frames and then you can put elements on the frames and then you can make those interactive. So you can say, if I click on this button, go to this page, you can play animations and that's really useful for developing front end. Uh, so the front end devs can look at the Figma and say, okay, this thing needs to go here and this button needs to link to that. And then they can do the typey stuff and make it happen. So the differences between the first four of these products um, are as follows. So Sketch is, um, it's only a desktop app. So you can't run it in browser like Figma and Framer. Uh, and you, um, you can't collaborate on it. So Figma and I think Framer have a collaborative aspect where you can use it kind of like Google Docs. So you'll see later when uh, we move on to the Figma workshop, but Vicky and I can actually edit the same document at the same time. Um, yeah, and that is just incredibly useful, um, especially like nowadays. Like I feel like if you if your product doesn't have like live collaboration, like what are you even doing? So um, that really puts Sketch and Adobe XD um, pretty far behind Figma and Framer, um, even though they they have essentially the same functionality. Uh, and then Framer is uh, a little bit more focused on on like animations and and making your website really spicy, but it is lacking in the uh, graphic design and vector manipulation department. So um, as a result, Vicky and I very strongly uh, encourage beginner designers to use uh, Figma, also because we get Figma Pro with our student accounts. And then um, the last tool is Adobe Illustrator. This is uh, a little bit further into the graphic design realm, uh, and it's really useful for creating more complex illustrations. All right, and then I'm going to hand it to Vicky to start the Figma workshop. Yes, okay, this is the fun part. All right, so let me go to the right thing. Um, okay, can close these now. Oh, ignore my clutter, this is embarrassing. Okay, so welcome to Figma. Sorry, that was horrible. I'm gonna um, open up an incognito window so that I can uh, log in with you guys. Okay, so the process of creating an account is pretty straightforward. So you're just gonna go, um, please follow along if, you're, if you want to. Obviously we can't force you to, but um, I think it'd be helpful just to get your hands on the tool and start using it. So you're gonna go to figma.com um, and then once you get there, you're gonna see this very, very nice website. I, can I point something out? Can I yeah. point something out? Yes. 
So you'll notice that as soon as you open the Figma website, it says where teams design together. Wow. Because that's the thing that they're marketing. Wow. He, he's spot on with that one. Um, you should be pre uh, Okay. So cool website. And then just click the black sign up button up here. And then it'll give you the option to sign up with Google. And then from here, you can just use your UC Berkeley account uh, like I'm demonstrating here and then go through CalNet. Oh no, this is no good. I think this happened last time. Okay, and then, okay, see, I'm not gonna do this part because <laughs> it's asking me for too much, but um, you get the idea. It, okay, once you create the account, I'm fairly sure it should take you to uh this page right here on the left let me just collapse this again um this and it'll probably just be like an empty screen with a bunch of stuff on it because you haven't made anything yet but we're about to change that okay so i'm just going to give you guys a little bit of time in case but type yes in the chat when you're done or or just type down in the chat when you're done so that everyone can be on the same page. Wait, Vicky, your tabs are so cool. How did you do that? They're what? Your tabs. Oh, the there's, purple. Tab, there's tab groups now. What? Yeah, so you can like collapse entire like, oh no, I'm not gonna expose myself. So you can collapse entire like groups of tabs and then it's like hella clean. It's crazy. Okay, so I can have oh yes one Duo. tab of the memes. Duo is very unfortunate. Yeah. Just select like a few tabs and then you can um right click and say add to new group, I think. It's pretty nice. Very cool. This is a, I think it's a recent feature. I think they just added it because I know for a fact I had like 100 tabs open a month ago so yeah unfortunate um can you guys like type done in the chat if you've logged in successfully just so i know when we can move on or type your favorite type of pasta ah <laughs> <gasps> I had, I had a, wait, I don't know what it's made out of. Never mind, I, I retract that somewhere. Is it shaped like a pumpkin or is it made of pumpkin? That's good. Oh, it's a meta pasta. That's great. <laughs> I never had those. The zoodles, zucchini noodles. Guys, there's there's a TikTok about a zucchini that was made at UC Berkeley that like is getting very, very viral right now. So it's just a guy throwing a zucchini. Um, who else hasn't? If you haven't been able to successfully make an account, feel free to speak up or type it in the chat. We wanna make sure we have everyone on board. Craft SpongeBob pasta. Yeah, did you ever have like the, the pre-made mac and cheese, but they had like SpongeBob shapes? No, no, I don't There's think. one like Squidward shape, SpongeBob shape. What? Huh? Oh, <laughs> uh, it's sick. Can I all? That just looks like it. Loki looks like cereal. Yeah. Wait, I look run. creepy. Kind of like beautiful. I can't. <sighs> they look like that cooked. 
it is really creepy it, it's just a bunch of holes time and i don't get it that's not spongebob it's like those really unfortunate spongebob popsicles you know? oh, this- <laughs> oh my god <laughs> you know they never turn out yeah guys i made a popsicle out of straight up milk the other day it was really good actually i would recommend um okay so okay i guess no one's saying in the chat that anything is wrong so far, but if there is, feel free to like private message or just message someone. Uh, okay. So hopefully everyone's been able to get into their um, correct account. And so basically, like I said, when you first enter the screen, you're gonna get to some sort of draft section. Um, basically there's some navigation here on the left side. And here you can search for your projects. So like, I want to search up this. There it is. Um, yeah, that's nice. And then recents allows you to access everything. So not only your projects, but also the projects that other people shared with you, um, just stuff that you've recently worked on. And then community is really cool, actually. Um, I learned in the last lecture, actually, that community is cool. I just kind of skimmed past it, but there's a lot of stuff on it. Um, like, this is cool a car, um, neomorphic icon set. Yeah, but I think this will be fun to explore, especially to just expand your um, design breadth of knowledge, um, but yeah, nice. And then next we have drafts um, for all your your personal projects on, and then you can create teams. So like if I'm working on a project with Time and, and like Justin or something that I can just add them to the team and they can access everything. Um, instead of having to go to separate things. But yeah, so to start your first project, you're gonna go to your top right and you're gonna click on new file and then it'll take you to a file called title. And you can name this whatever you want. I'm just gonna name it lesson demo. Okay, and then, yeah, so feel free to just like play around with some of the stuff here while I talk about it, but I'll just like uh, show you guys kind of the navigation and how to, use all the different things on the page right now. Um, yeah, okay, so to start on the very upper left, um, let me, oh, it's full screen. Um, okay, so on the very upper left, we have kind of like our navigation bar. It's just our like typical, you know, file. You can export stuff, um, edit. You can edit here. You can edit elements on here. I usually don't, but you can do that. Um, you can change the view. You can show different nav bars, you can hide stuff. Um, and then a bunch of just other stuff like plugins and integrations. Cool to explore. Um, and then, yeah, so this is just the basic standard administrative stuff. And then right next to it, we have our select tool, which is our little cursor here. So when we make something, when we're on our select, we can select and deselect. Um, yeah, and then we can also scale stuff. Um, it'll proportionately scale it using the scale tool. Another way to do that is just to hold, use the select tool, hold shift and then scale it normally. Um, but then time will get more into that. And then we have a frame here and the frame is essentially our, um, you can imagine it as kind of like the page of a website. So when we say frame, we're basically just saying like web page essentially. Um, and you notice that on the right here, we have all these different types of frames. Um, that are suited for all the different types of tablets and devices and stuff like that. Um, even Apple Watches, very cool. And then under frames, we have slice. I'm pretty sure you can slice frames. You know, I mean, I'm not quite sure on that one. But <laughs> yeah, the frame tool, it, or, sorry, the slice tool is a mystery to me as well. Okay, cool. Yeah, I've never used it, so don't worry about it right now. Um, sorry for the ambiguity ambiguity um but here we have our shape builder the square right next to the frame is our shape builder you can create all sorts of shapes you can make an arrow um yeah, that's an arrow uh, you can make lines you can make stars even and you can increase the amount of points on the stars yeah um yeah, so basically these are all our shape builders and you can also place images um so i want my an emoji sleeping there she is um, but yeah placing images is nice um, next we have our pen tool which is kind of like time mentioned earlier we can draw things um, 
it's not as fun to use. It's not as cool of a pen tool as the one in Illustrator. It works um, if you want to make like random shapes um, or like more simplistic shapes, you can do that. So like once you create a shape, then if you double click on it, you can like go back to the points you added and like move it around. Um, and then there's all these other tools here that regard your personal custom shape. And then under here we have pencil, which is just a drawing tool. And it like smooths out your lines for you, which is pretty cool. And then we have our text, which you can make text in. Nice. Um, and then this is this hand is just to move around. Um, typically, you can just scroll up and down on your mouse or your trackpad to do that. Um, here is a very fancy, uh, not fancy, very useful tool. It's just like Google Docs, pretty much. Um, you can comment on stuff. So if I'm like, oh, this an emoji shouldn't be sleeping, I can just drop it here, like, wake up. Cool. Um, and then you can post it here and see like the list of feedbacks here. And it's really nice when someone else is working on a project and then you come in and you want to like have them tweak certain things and you can just drop it there. Um, so yeah, it's just like Google Docs. And then let's see up here, naming on the here over here, you have sharing options. Here you can see everyone that is on the doc, again, just like Google Docs. Then here you can play the prototype, which we'll show later. Um, okay, and then to get to our um, sidebars, on the left-hand side here, we have our, our object tree, basically. So it holds all the stuff on our page. And you can select objects by clicking on them in the actual editor, or you can just click on them in the sidebar here. Here, you can also name stuff. So I just want to name it an emoji. Um, and then you can select all these things. And the, the structure of this is kind of just like a directory structure. Um, let's say you want to group together like four of these items then they turn into this drop down, and then it's kind of like acts like a folder that holds these things. Um, it's pretty standard and it's really nice um, to organize stuff together and make it as straightforward as possible. Um, yeah, and then here you can make new pages. So for example, if I want to make one page for our website mobile, um, and then this page can be our website for tablet, and then this can be like our Apple Watch application or something, oh, then you can just split up everything so it's not on like one giant screen um, because that can be hard to navigate. Okay, so then on the right hand side, we have all the different properties that show up for stuff that you select. Um, it's different for everything. So for example, on like this line that I made, um, it's gonna give me like a stroke option. And then in the square, you can add fill and change its color. You can also add a stroke here. Um, it's very similar to like Photoshop vibes. And then for text, obviously, it's a little bit different. You can change the font size. Um, you can change the spacing between the letters. This is line height. And then you can change the alignment of everything. You can also change the color. Um, yeah, and then up here, you have like the position of your stuff, so your x and y coordinates. You have the height of your element, the angle at which it's rotated at. Um, all this fancy stuff. And then with images, kind of same thing, obviously, like different properties, but it, this is essentially where you edit the properties of an element. Um, yeah, I guess to go over some more basic ones here, we have this box we wanna, uh, let's just explore some of the properties here. So with boxes or images, also, I think you can give it border radius, which just rounds like the corners. It's very trendy nowadays in design. So um, that's good to, that's a good one to know. And then here, if you want to resize something, but you want to keep the proportions the same, you can just like press up arrow on the width and then the height will change proportionally to it. Um, this is blending mode. So all typically not super useful, but if you want to create some cool effects and then you can change the opacity of your entire layer. So I want this to like be a little bit transparent so I can see me up here, I can do that. Um, you can also change the opacity of the stroke separately. Effects here are things like drop shadow. Um, drop shadow is just this little shadow that appears behind the object. You can change a lot of its properties. Um, this is also kind of trendy because people like to put white thing, like white boxes on top of a white background and then like just put a drop shadow in. By people, I mean me. Um, and then you can blur your entire object and give it an inner shadow. 
blur the background of the thing. This is actually cool. It looks like a, like a screen or something. Like if I, it's like a foggy screen door. Um, yeah, it's cool sometimes. And then here's where you can export elements. So let's say I have this beautiful red square that I just made and I really want to set it as my desktop wallpaper. I can click on it, add an export and then like choose a file type and then just export it and it shows up like as a image again. So yeah, um, that's kind of just a navigational structure. And then right next to design, we have prototype, which I'll actually just get into later. So I won't talk about now. And then inspect actually gives you direct like CSS and properties from here straight into code. So if you're ever styling stuff, obviously not as relevant to the back end, but the code is here. So yeah, um, that's all of the navigation stuff. And I'll just hand it off to time and to show you like the actual content of building stuff. All right. Yeah. So um, we're going to do a little bit of a workshop. So I'm going to share my screen if I can find the button. Um, OK, sick. So um, I am on Windows. Um, so I, to, to preface, I think that learning shortcuts is pretty important for being, um, for, for like mastery of, of one of these platforms. Um, so I'm going to, whenever I do anything, I'm just gonna call out the shortcut that I'm using, um, but there was always a non-shortcut way to do it. So um, yeah, that, that's, uh, I'll, I'll tell you guys how to do it fast, but you can also do it slow. Um, but yeah, so I'm on Windows, so my shortcuts might be a little different. Uh, so I'm going to use Vicky's help and also I'll try to, um, remember the, the Mac shortcuts when I can. Okay, cool. So is everyone ready? All right, cool. I like the enthusiasm. <laughs> so we're going to start off with, um, a frame. So you're going to hit the F key for frame F. Uh, it's also this button up here, so uh, you can do either of those. And so before clicking on anything, um, instead of like clicking, click and dragging to make the frame, we're going to use one of these presets. Um, so let's just use the iPhone 11 Pro X1. Um, so here we have our, our initial frame, right? And then with this one, <clears throat> We're now going to, uh, so let's say we're making an app for this company and they're like, hi, uh, we haven't hired any designers. So can you also make us a logo? So you're like, okay, I'll make a logo. So on the front page, um, let, let's just make the logo. So you're going to hit R for rectangle. Um, and that's this one right here. Uh, and then we're just going to draw a rectangle. So what you can do is you can either click and drag or you can hold the shift key to keep the proportions the same. Um, so let's just keep the proportions at like, um, it doesn't have to be exact, but let's just make it a square. And then what you can do is you can, um, you can uh, give the, um, you can round the corners by clicking dragging on this, uh, this little ball in the corner. So, um, let's just do that. And, um, we can also change the color. So on the, on the right side, you can go over here, you can change the color. Um, let's make it this like nice teal. Let's say we're going for like a, a dental company. So, you know, this is like a nice surgical blue. Um, so now you can, you can manipulate it. You can actually, if you hold shift, it'll, um, it'll kind of snap to a, a certain set of angles. Uh, so if you want to make it perfectly 45 degrees, uh, you can just hold shift and it'll line it up for you. Um, so we have this, this, um, how am I rotating? Um, I, so notice how, like, as you, um, as you approach the edges of the box with your mouse, um, you see this like little icon pop up. So if I approach an edge, it, um, 
it turns into this. And if I approach a corner, it turns into that, like the, the angle icon. Um, yeah, so if you, if you hold on the, on the corner, uh, it'll let you rotate. Um, and then of course, uh, control slash command Z and um, control slash command shift Z uh, is undo and redo. So that's a, that was a good, good hack. Um, yeah, so um, let's say that uh, we, we say like, oh shoot, we made it a little, little too big. So it, I'm holding alt shift on, on windows and that is, here, I have my Mac too. Um, it is Fn and shift, no, sorry, option and shift on Mac. Um, and that'll let you resize it um, while also keeping, um, it, it'll let you resize it from the center while also keeping the constraints the same. So that's a little bit of a, that's like one of the more advanced things you can do. Um, but yeah, it's very useful for, for getting good at Figma. So then, um, all right, so our logo is a little basic right now. So let's spice it up by, by copying it over. So I'm gonna hit, um, I'm just gonna copy paste this over and it'll, it'll duplicate my shape. Um, now you can use control shift, or sorry, you control, use control C, control V or command C. Command C, sorry, it's been a long day. Com control C, Control V, or Command C, Command V. That was difficult. Um, or you can hold the Alt or the um, Option key to duplicate the shape. So I'm just going to duplicate the shape over here. And then at the top, um, if you click and drag and select both of these shapes, um, you'll notice this uh, menu over here. So um, this is components and this is for components and Vicky's gonna get into that a little later. But what we're gonna do now is we're going to um, join these two shapes together. So um, I think this logo would look best if we excluded the selection, um, but you know, um, Design is an art form, so you can you can pick however you want. You can just join them together regularly. Um, you can play around with these settings. Um, so we have our logo now, and now we're gonna we're gonna put some text. So um, you can hit this button, or you can hit T for text, and then if you just click, it'll automatically make a um, auto resizing text box. Um, so let's call the app. Um, teeth um teeth care so we're we're gonna make a, a dental like uh tooth health tracker so we have our, our 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 name and um over here you can you can play around with the settings you can change the um the font and uh yeah gilroy bold is a nice one um yeah, and then here there there's some more advanced settings, but um, that comes uh, you can explore with those on your own time. So, let's say now that this is the home page of our app, and we want to make a button that uh, reader that that allows the user to to go onto the rest of the app. So we're gonna hit R again for rectangle, um, and we're just gonna draw a rectangle this time, uh, and then you'll notice that. Figma automatically has these like snap lines, which are very useful. Um, so we're gonna do the same thing. Uh, we're gonna make the corners a little uh, rounded. And then if you hold, if you hit the I button, um, I'm not sure where the, the on-screen button to click it actually is. Um, but if you hit I, it, it um, goes to the eyedropper tool. So it lets you select any color on the screen. Uh, you'll notice that like little bubble that gives me like the pixel zoom in. Um, so I'm just gonna, oh, you wanna make sure that you're selecting your, your object that you're um, using. So uh, you can copy that over. I'm just gonna um, make another text box that says uh, click. 
and then there we go. So now uh, we're going to make the second page, right? So um, if you click on the, the name of the frame, it selects the entire frame. And then if you hold Alt or Option, uh, you can, it'll let you click and drag the frame over. Uh, you can do that or you can copy paste it. Um, yeah. So let's say on our second page, we, we want to say, okay, pictures. Um, and so here we're going to, we're going to, I'll just quickly show you how to import pictures on Figma. Um, so if you go to this little hamburger menu and you go to file and then you hit um, place image, it'll let you select a file from your computer. Um, so let's just say, um, you know, you found some like funny meme <laughs> uh, and you want to put it on your website, then, then you can place it right there. Um, yeah, so those are some basics for, um, for Figma. Um, if you have any more questions, uh, I'll be holding office hours tomorrow. Um, and yeah, so if you want to come in and ask questions about Figma, um, yeah, you can come in. And so uh, now I'm going to hand it over to Vicky to show you guys more about prototyping and components. Nice. Thanks, Timon. This is our last part. OK. Uh, uh, oh, oh, OK. Um, Timon, can you share with me the Figma that you were just working on? I do not believe I received it. Wait, it's the same one from last time. Uh, oh, OK. I'm done. All right. I still don't. OK. Oh, yes, TP here. OK. Cool. So I'll briefly talk about importing elements. So there's a fun thing that you can do with Figma is that uh, for photos and stuff, Timon kind of already showed this, but you can also just like copy them off of um, websites by themselves. So I want this nice, nice, perfect egg. And you can copy and paste images actually straight into Figma, which is nice. And then there's a file type called SVG. Uh, don't know what it stands for, but it's essentially like a shape that is modifiable within um, editors. So for example, I have this website called Blob Maker and um, you can just make blobs. <laughs> it's so satisfying to me. Um, but yeah, essentially I wanna make this cool blob and I wanna download it as an SVG. And SVGs, like I said, are still editable. They're not like a photo. Um, so then you can just drag it straight in. And then notice that we can still edit its actual shape while in the fig mode, which is very nice. Um, so yeah, that's just a fun thing. Uh, okay, and then next we're going to be talking about prototyping. So prototyping is essentially the way that you get different pages to connect to each other. So let's say for example here, um, see pics or yeah, one, one photo, but okay, let's, let's say that we want this to be our entire application, right? <laughs> Sorry, the meme is <laughs> distracting me. Um, so let's say I want this button here to um, lead to this page. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> okay. Um, so yeah, basically what we do is that we are gonna go up to this top right area on your right navigation bar and you're gonna press prototype. <laughs> Sorry, I need to delete this. <laughs> Okay, so you're gonna press prototype, and then you're gonna click on the element that you get, like that is gonna take you to the next page. And notice that when you click on this element, you have like this little plus icon that appears, and you're gonna just drag it. And oh, well, actually, sometimes it's a little confusing what you're actually selecting on. So you notice here that we have selected group one, which is essentially what represents a button. So that's good. Then we take this, we hold on it, and then we drag it onto the frame that we want it to lead to. So now what happens is that when I press this play button in the top right corner, it's gonna open up my application as like a phone. And then I have my little cursor here and I can click on this and go to the next page. So that's exactly, uh, that's essentially how you do prototyping and page navigation in your prototype, because a lot of times it's really nice to 
be able to show like a half working demo of an application without actually having to put in the manpower of building it, um, building it using code at least. <laughs> so yeah, so that's prototyping. There's a lot of different options that you have when you do prototyping. So to select a certain action, you can just click on like the arrow that represents it. So if I say like, oh, I want to select select this interaction from the home page to the pictures and I can just click on this arrow. And then you can change the different ways that you get to this interaction. And then you can, there are even more options down here. Then you can say like, okay, if I want this frame to open as an overlay over the original page, you can do that, um, different ways to do that. And then the animation, so instant versus like dissolve. Uh, one really cool thing is smart animate. Figma is really neat because they have this thing that, uh, let me show you kind of an example of this. Um, yeah, so Smart Animate basically takes like the elements on the two frames and like Figma will analyze it and just like find the smartest way to move the stuff so it looks like it's um, actually animated intentionally. Like for example, here it like, it slides in, which I think is really cool. Um, it's really cool that Figma has this thing. Um, so yeah, that's something that you can use. It makes everything look really like nice and put together. It's just the extra cherry on top. Um, okay, yeah, so that's prototyping in a nutshell. And then lastly, we're just gonna talk about some good practice. So of course, like in code, there's things like commenting code and structure, uh, order of your CSS styling selectors, all that kind of stuff. Um, in Figma and in design, you also have that because a lot of people are going to be interacting with your project and you want it to be as straightforward as possible. So we're going to go over four different, briefly go over four different good practices. So first we're going to talk about components. So let us say we have this button here that appears, wait, no, that's not what I wanted. Um, let's see, have this thing here. That's actually our navigation bar and we're going to say nav bar. Um, okay, so obviously a navigation bar appears on every page, right? So essentially what it looks like in an entire like project in your Figma is that every single frame will have this nav bar on top. And you can imagine that once you have a bunch of these nav bars, um, that's only four, but imagine there are a hundred. We'll see that what if we want to make this nav bar green, right? Okay, we don't wanna to have to like go through each of these navigation bars and change them, right? So basically what we're gonna do is we're gonna create components. So to create a component, you're gonna select on an element and then you're gonna right click on it and press uh, create component. And then basically what happens here is that this component now is kind of like a parent of everything else. So if you copy this a ton of times, then it's still like basically the rest of these instances will be the children of like this master component here. And so what happens is that now when you want to change one nav bar and you actually want everything else to change, you can just change this one thing and then notice how everything else changes with it. Um, this is a really nice tool to have because then you don't have to go through and do redundant work. Just like in coding, don't want to do redundant work. Um, but yeah, so that's that's essentially what components do. Um, obviously there's, actually no, that's pretty much it. There's a lot of use cases for it, but no concept. Um, next we have naming. So notice on the side here, we have a bunch of different things that are very nondescript. So like, what is this, right? iPhone 11 Pro X one. Um, we can double tap on the element in the left navigation. Um, we'll select it from our tree structure here. And then we'll just, name it something else, so name it landing page. And then essentially this really helps um, people navigate through a project better and be better like locate uh, elements uh, by name and also see like what this element is meant for, what it's supposed to be. Like if I see this random shape here and I'm like, oh, that's, that's definitely not the logo because it doesn't look good, right? But then I notice that it actually is the logo by its name. Tyvin, that wasn't targeted towards you. It was just an example. Um, <laughs> Yeah, so that's naming. Um, next we have creating styles. So kind of similar to components, but let's say we have this, uh, uh, okay. So let's say we have this uh, element here and I 
decide to create a nice neon drop shadow behind it. So I'm gonna make it look like it's glowing. Watch this, it's gonna be very epic. Um, okay, I kind of chose the wrong color. Okay, there we go. So now it's like glowing, right? And what, you know, I, I see this and I'm like, oh wow, I really love that. So I wanna like add it to everything, right? So basically what we do is that in effects, we can go to this kind of like dice looking thing and it should say style. And then you're going to basically press the plus button to create a style. I'm gonna call it purple glow, right? And then now if we go into purple glow, we see that it's, it represents this purple like drop shadow. And now if I want my, my lovely egg to also have a purple glow around it, I can go into effects and click on the dice icon and then just choose purple glow from it. And it'll basically have saved everything. So now like when I go to this egg, I don't have to memorize the hex code for this purple glow or like the amount of blur and everything. Um, yeah, similar concept to components. Um, and then lastly, we have grouping. Um, kind of, I mean, you've seen instances of when we do this, but certain things are meant to go together. For example, this, this button here. It doesn't make sense that if I drag this button, only the background would come with it. Um, a button involves not only the box that surrounds it, but also the text. So you would select both of them, press Command or Control G, or right click and press Group Selection. And then it'll treat this thing as like one object with many components inside of it. And yeah, I mean, this is just an organizational thing uh, and it makes it a lot easier to edit your project down the line when there's a lot of complex stuff on it. So yeah. Um, okay, that's all for our lesson actually. The homework is, we will actually talk about that, let's see. Okay, so basically, Oh yeah, feel free to let us know if you have questions right off the bat. Um, we'll also stick around for a bit after in case you have anything else. But let's see. Wait, what? Oh, here. Okay, so for your homework, um, what you're gonna do is you're gonna recreate this website's landing page. It should be pretty simple. You don't have to get all like the details in as long as everything looks pretty correct and you have like the correct colors and everything. Um, so basically we have this website here called Scale. Um, it's like an AI company, I don't know. But you're just in charge of basically recreating this landing page area. Uh, all these photos and stuff, you can feel free to just like copy these images. You don't have to like recreate these yourselves. Um, so you don't have to do this entire page, just do everything that you can see here and in this lesson plan. Um, and then there's this button here that says talk to us. When you click on it, it should navigate to this page. And then you should just rebuild this page as well. And again, like use these images. You don't have to like build it yourself. As long as you have like the general components, it should be fine. Um, yeah, so yeah, it'll just involve a little bit of prototyping, um, navigating from the landing page to talk to us page. And let's see. Yeah, that's pretty much it. Um, Timon, you got anything else? Um, no, uh, yeah, that, that was our workshop, guys. Thanks for coming. Nice. Feel free to stick around and ask questions if you want to. Yes. Bye, guys. Bye. 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 Nice. No one turned on their cameras. This <laughs> Okay. Um, Tidgeman. Vicky. Everything good? Yeah, wait. Um, oh, wait, why don't we set up